my name is Martin Honzig. I am the managing director of uh, the unit um, festival, the Prias Electronica, um, the exhibitions in our museum as well as our export exhibitions. Uh, in 2040, I become 70. In times like this, it's even more unpredictable what reality I would face, what the challenges would be that me as somebody being 70 would have to handle and um, to not keep it in this uncertainty it really makes sense to try to simulate this journey into a future and to use this as a slingshot to come back into the reality to make the shifts the, the necessity of the shifts happen now to take care that in 20 years we still have a place here to live The Future Humanity Journey Workshop is a new format developed here at Ars Electronica and the idea is to bring together four experts from four different backgrounds to discuss on what our day will look like in 2040 and that means covering the global issues humanity will be facing in 2040 as well as the little details a human will be facing in their everyday life. Um, my name is Yoko Shimizu. I am an artist and researcher at the Ars Electronica Future Lab. So, Eric, um, would you like to start your presentation about what you wrote for the external factor as well as the persona? I, I, I just checked on my internet use and I, used, uh, I use about 10 gigabytes a day uh, now with all the video calls and I just realized I use more in one day than I did in all in the 1990s. And uh, I expect that in 2040, we're going to be seeing uh, massive amounts of, of data uh, moved around but between people, maybe a division between the people that are hyper connected and then the rest of the people are, uh, are it, it, that's also, also creating a division in, the, uh, in society. Um, I, and I think that uh, we're already seeing uh, a sort of a scary ability to uh, replicate uh, video perfectly with fake people. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that where it's going to be very hard to distinguish between what is real and what isn't. I've kind of um, gave myself a restriction, which is that um, if I see some kind of an onset of things right now, I think that it's going to expand for the next 20 years and it's going to become reality. So I've just um, kind of articulated the things that's already here, but maybe some people don't really realize. So that's my starting point and the question. And um, so this is my board here. And it kind of resonates a lot with what um, Eric was just saying, but I just write, um, want to start from here, which is the corporate reality and psyche, which is my human side. These stickies, a lot of them are taken from a lot of theater performances that I've seen actually in the past few years. So um, a lot of artists are imagining these kind of futures already. And so the first part is that, as Eric was saying, the third sticky right here is that the individual thinking vanishes a lot because we are hyper-connected. So we, we start thinking together with like maybe 500 people and that becomes the norm. I do agree that there is this feeling of being in your own security network, but there is also a deep uh, craving um, 
like there's something disturbing about these bubbles and people, uh, even though they may be at a certain comfort zone, but they're still craving for something that they cannot really put into words, which is a more um, human connection beyond those uh, uh, bubbles. So there is a growing movement, the way I see it, of uh, looking for communities, looking for communa in the uh, uh, revolutionary anarchist sense, um, transcending these bubbles and these limitations. The, the exact metaphor of what's happening right now is Uber. Uh, for talking with some, about something that's going to happen in 20 years from now is a great idea in terms of storytelling. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's also interesting to, to see like, yeah, those, those two points. Um, mm. so the interface and the thing that makes us more um, like the human side of the interface, let's say. 20 years AP, like after pandemic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Do you think this is the last one? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, the one that made a difference for this generation somehow. Mm -hmm. sure. 9 September 2040, 20 AP after pandemic. Alex seeks connections. Alex lives in a hyper-connected society that is hugely affected by drought and climate change. She lives on the road, always looking for tasks to fulfill in exchange for nutrition. She avoids state control and works as a free denizen. Time spans are short. She eats on the go. Deep questions around the state of humanity are boiling inside her but hyperconnectivity keeps her mind busy, always with constant publicity impact. Transform yourself, transform yourself. She finds her moment of leisure and deep connections in the heart of a commune she travels to find. She disconnects in order to meet them, to regain consciousness about who she is, who they are, what it means to be human, what it means to be part of humanity. Alex is in Venice, uh, uh, in a, staying in a uh, upper floor of a ruined building with uh, most of the city flooded. Uh, she's only renting a, uh, uh, a chair, uh, a temporary chair, but it is connected at high speed lasers to her uh, virtual work. Um, she gets a call at 3 a.m. Uh, from her taskmaster who says there is a client who wants her services. Uh, so this may be the little bit of work that uh, will sustain her for a while. Um, this is, uh, the call is from a, uh, a client in Japan uh, who, where it's uh, 10 in the morning already and the client wants uh, Alex to uh, help uh, her mother uh, in Japan uh, prepare lunch and keep company with the woman in Japan. Uh, Alex doesn't speak Japanese, but the automatic translation will take care of most of that. And uh, although Alex will sound a bit like a robot when she's talking to the uh, person, the old woman in Japan, uh, it's the... Uh, the network system allows her to, uh, the brain, human brain interface allows her to control the expressions on the uh, telerobot and uh, keep a conversation with this old woman. But in the background, she's, the system is bombarding her with uh, urging her to, to sell this, uh, this woman in Japan um, extra features to increase uh, Alex's income for that task job. Uh, it, she's uh, very good about doing, providing this sort of fake empathy through this virtual world, uh, but Alex is, is looking for something more. And so after her task ends after a few hours, uh, she's back to 
her real life in, in, uh, in the flooded city of Venice. So like every day, she's dedicating her morning hours um, to studying. So every other day, she studies an online MOOC about um, new skills she has to get for new gigs that's coming up in a few weeks from now. And when she's not studying, studying that, she's uh, studying enlightenment philosophy, which makes her wonder about how knowledge might have been shared in a pre-connected time. Um, then she eats lunch on the go because there's no real time for rest and leisure during um, this, this, um, this period. After she had her lunch, she's taking a train to, to Linz, uh, where she's meeting um, a, a group she's been seeing for some time. Um, on the road or on the train, she is using this time to connect with Sasha, um, a person she had met like uh, not so long ago and have a recent uh, love affair. They are living in different cities, so they, are, they have started this romantic uh, VR nap um, where they take time together and meet on private servers. So then she uh, arrives um, in this place where she meets uh, people from a commune that she has gotten in touch with. Before she enters the commune, she disconnects her brain machine interface and uh, once she's there she's greeted by a, by a very warm uh, group of human beings they all say hi by touching by uh, physical strong physical connections um, and then they eat together they talk they discuss um, issues related to humanity basically asking one and again what does it mean to be human and how can we stay human in this time, in this context where humanity seems to be diluting? So it's 9 p.m. She's constantly split between this info technology and body-based memories and nostalgic experiences. Today she wants to go to a rave culture and dance together with her friends. In an abandoned building, Somewhere alongside the suburbs of Linz, she dances with her friends, played by Holograph DJ. On the screen, created by Mist of Water, 3D images of Michael Jackson, Beyonce, and Bruno Mars are projected, and they look really real. She doesn't know what is real and fake anymore. It's a 2000s throwback party. Um, sometimes there are glitches of those images. She knows something is wrong. Uh, there are nighttime news coming in, um, and the news is full of euphemism and filters to protect the vulnerable citizens and really hard to understand. But she's, she goes on partying for a couple of hours. After two, three hours, she doesn't know why, but the, the DJing and the images disappear. Maybe the power went out, or maybe she, the control of the state did something to stop her party. Outside a commune, there are more and more people who are extremely nationalist and racist. After the party, uh, although she wants to stay more unplugged and physical, she has to start working early in the morning. So she looks for a place to plug in, goes to a charging shelter, and goes to bed and sleep. Yay. Cool. I definitely want to thank you for me. It was. And I mean, there's really a privilege to be right here on this Zoom call with each and every one of you and hearing these thoughts firsthand. I think it's extremely cool and so interesting and food for thought for the next 20 years at least. And uh, <laughs> definitely, thank you. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was very fun. Very yeah, fun. thank you for making this happen. <laughs> But I think all of the panelists worked really well together. We had a lot of passionate discussions through our um, remote online sessions. And we were able to um, collect our ideas and integrate our ideas into this online collaborative board, which ended up becoming a very important tool. And I feel that this type of collaboration will become more and more important as we collaborate more internationally with the global colleagues.